see it, but it's not as intense as you might think it would be, especially considering some of the ghosting I've seen on other Erin Condren products. And I'm wondering if it's because the paper is so smooth. Hi everybody, today I am taking a look at the new Erin Condren Petite journals. These are the dot grid journals that they have released kind of as a bullet journaling sort of situation to use in their folio system. These are the A5 size. Now their previous iteration of the blank journals for their folios had lines. I think they may have also had blank ones, but they did not have dot grid to the best of my memory. So these are a newer edition. Looking at the specs, the journals are 5.7 inches by 8.25 inches, about A5 size. Here's my A5 Archer and Olive. They're basically the same size as each other. This has 80 dot grid pages. There are two different styles of these. This is the charcoal color block, and then there's also a turquoise color block. And you can choose if you want to to personalize it with foil with your initials, just your initials. I didn't do that because I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep it or not. Now they tell you up front that the dot grid is five millimeter and that there are page numbers. So I haven't even opened this yet, so let's take a look. I also grabbed the stickers, the uh, dot grid stickers, and I'm gonna take a look at those too. But for now, we'll look at the journal. This is $9. It's not inexpensive but if the paper quality is nice then it's not like my archer and olive is thirty dollars so it's not a terrible price not a great price not a terrible price kind of medium price i guess it's got nice stitching along the side there's the block colors and this is foil running down the center when you open it up on the inside there is the book belongs to foil and it the cover doesn't really like you that much and then there's index pages and it's got the woven wheat situation along the top, subject, and then pages. It gives you three index pages, which I think is probably more than enough pages for an 80 page journal. And the page numbers do not start, which I do like until we get to the dot grid. And it also looks like the woven wheat is only on the index pages, but when you get to the dot grid itself, it's not there. The journal lies flat. It's not beautifully. You have to like kind of train it down, but once you press it down, it stays down. And it seems like the stitching can take a little bit of a beating. Unlike some of the other notebooks I've looked at, it is stitched all the way to the top. Now something a little bit weird just by flipping through this, I noticed that some of the front pages, the dot grid is slightly darker than the, the back pages. Maybe that's just me noticing that. The dot grid is a gray. It's not super pale, but it is not like super dark. There have been some note notebooks I've looked at where the dot grid is like stark. This is not that. The actual font that they use for the, the page numbers is um, visible. It's a darker gray, but it's not so dark gray that it's like in your face. Five millimeter dot grid seems to be comparable, if not slightly bigger than some of the other standard, well, I say standard, it's not really standard. Some of the other dot grid notebooks that are popular, like Loish Term, Scribbles That Matter, Archer and Olive, it's in the same ballpark. It might be a little bit bigger. The dots do not go all the way to the edge of the page. There is a slight column on either side and there's a slight break down at the very bottom. At the top, they go all the way to the top with just a little bit of space up above. Now, in terms of the, the size of like the number of squares, it is 23 across and 36 going down, which means unlike the previous Erin Condren notebook I was talking about, I don't even remember which one it was, but there was one recently where there wasn't at least 31 squares going in one direction in terms of a, um, a tracker. This has 36 going down, so you actually do have room for a full month of what single square tracker days. Now, in comparison to my Archer and Olive, which does prove the point that the squares in here are slightly bigger than the squares in my Archer and Olive, the Archer and Olive is 26 squares this way and 38 squares this way. So you have a loss of three squares in one direction and two squares in the other. Closer than the other one I looked at, but still a little bit bigger in case that's something you're looking for or curious about. Now you get through the whole thing and it's just dot grid all the way up to, so it winds up being 76 numbered pages, the index and this back page here, which is like the Erin Condren advertising page. And then you have a little bit of foil on the back and that's the whole journal. Now the paper, it doesn't tell you what kind of paper it is. The paper feels nice and thick. In terms of like texture and you know, my, my best guess based on what I am holding, it feels a little bit thinner than the planner paper. 
just a little bit. Feels a little bit thinner than the planner paper and a little bit smoother. The planner paper feels a little bit more porous. Again, the notepad paper feels slightly thicker and slightly more porous. So this paper is not quite the same. I feel like it might be a slight step down than the other paper that they're usually using. Okay, so I've got several pens here to test. I have a gel pen, which is a Uniball Signo gel pen. I have a fine liner, my Pilot fine liner that I've been using a lot lately. I have an Erin Condren dual tipped marker. I have a mild liner and I have a Tombow dual brush pen. So we're gonna test all of these and we will see how they bleed, how they shadow, etc., etc. All right, now before I flip this over to check the other side, one thing I am going to point out is that the Pilot Fine Liner did not smear immediately on writing, which is the problem I have been having with my uh, Archer and Olive, so that was nice. So I've got all of them here, and we're gonna take a look and see kind of what they look like. It feels like the gel pen, the Pilot, and the EC uh, smaller point all left that ridged surface that happens sometimes with a heavy hand. There's a little bit of the imprint on this page as well. I have a heavy hand, so take that as you will. When it comes to bleeding or ghosting, there isn't any bleeding. There is definitely a little bit of ghosting with the mild liners and the Tombow, but it's not very much. You can see it, but it's not as intense as you might think it would be, especially considering some of the ghosting I've seen on other Erin Condren products. And I'm wondering if it's because the paper is so smooth, because the paper does not feel thicker than the notebook paper, the notepad paper, or the, the planner paper, but it's smoother. And I feel like the Erin Condren pens tend to shadow and bleed quite a bit in my planner, but they're not really doing that here. There's a little bit of ghosting, but that's it, even with the thicker tip. And I'm wondering if maybe that's because the paper is not porous. I don't know. So. The paper quality seems to be decent. It is white. I would not say it is bright white. It's not gray white either. It's got a little bit of a cast to it, but it is nowhere near as yellow as the, the Lois term or the scribbles that matter. But as you can see, the Archer and Olive is white with a slight blue cast to it. And this is white with a slight yellow cast, just nowhere near as yellow. So this is the Archer and Olive versus the Erin Condren paper. And then this is the Lois term versus the Erin Condren paper. So the paper is yellower than the Archer and Olive, whiter than the Lois term. That gives you kind of a scale for it. Okay, so that's the notebook. We've looked at the notebook. Before I give my opinion on everything, I wanna take a second to look at these stickers. This is the Dot Grid Sticker Sheet Duo. You get two sheets for $5.50, which is actually a fairly decent price compared to some stickers I've seen for sale. But if these are like any of the other Erin Condren stickers I've used, they may have a bit of a trouble sticking. And so that just makes them a little bit more pricey in terms of what you get, although I do love the foil. These both have all silver foil, the same, it's basically two of the same sheets. You get this like dot grid situation that has a handful of the grids in different colors. It's a strip. Then you have a bunch of these like asterisks, some flags, some more asterisks, and some more strips. I don't know, I'm not really sure what I would do with these, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, I yeah, I could write like, a banner or something on that. Maybe I'll try and use these in my bullet journal. But ultimately, like, I think having the dots on there in foil is kind of unnecessary. And these asterisks, again, I, I probably might use them, but I, I probably only really for sure use the flag. So they're cute and they may be really interesting. I just, I'm not really sure what the function of these is supposed to be. They feel kind of like they're to decorate the dot grid with more dot grid as opposed to having kind of a clear purpose. I don't know, maybe I just haven't had enough caffeine today. So I would probably, for me, I would not buy these again. I may get, I'll probably get some good use out of them. I'm generally pretty good at finding uses for things, but I, I won't buy those again. As for the notebook, I actually think this could be an excellent beginner's bullet journal notebook. Has enough squares to do habit trackers, but it is short. And I have talked about before how I am a proponent of a brand new bullet journaler getting a short notebook because then you finish it quickly and you get that sense of completion. You know, I know that some people are not fans of like the folio system, but this is the same size thereabouts as other bullet journal notebooks. There's, it's slightly bigger when it comes to the squares, but you're getting kind of the same footprint when it comes to the size of a notebook. So honestly, I think that this um, 
this is this is a decent notebook choice. Like I can't see much wrong with this. The paper seems to be decent quality. It comes with an index. It has numbered pages. My biggest downfalls to this notebook are that the saying it's 80 pages, but one of those 80 pages being a advertising page to me is a little bit like really. And other than that, like I don't know, maybe just the, the this being index page, this side and this side, and not having another one. I feel like in practicality three index pages are not necessary for the length of this notebook, but that's, that could be totally personal preference. So yeah. And nine bucks, it's not a bad price, not a great price, not a bad price. So yeah, I think that this could be a solid option for you. If you're looking to get into it, if you're looking for a shorter dot grid notebook, uh, this could be a good choice. Yeah. I'd love to know what your opinions are in the comments. If there are other notebooks or planners you would like me to take a look at, we are getting into mid-year planner season and I am not going to be devoting quite so much time on my channel to planner reviews. At least that's the theory right now. I want to be trying some new things out, but I will be doing some reviews. So if there's a new planner that you want me to take a look at for this new academic year, then please let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.